so we are on chapter 29 of for Samuel and um, we what we've had as a little bit of a recap we've in up to this okay. point up to this point in Samuel we've had uh, oh one of the grand one of the grandkids is is awake yes Katie is here with me now and Katie I'm on a zoom Bible study with my church oh, yeah so we're just starting you doing okay good um, so so we are um chapter 29 we've we've <clears throat> what we basically had so far in samuel is um uh, samuel kind of advising the people and then them saying that they wanted a king because they didn't want to listen to god anymore and so saul is appointed uh anointed and made king and then the last the last um, couple of Bible studies has been this sort of I'm thinking of like a like a boomerang. Um, yeah. David David comes in to to advise Saul, and Saul tries to kill him, and so then David runs away, and Saul says, "Why did you run away? You're you know you're my my child, my my advisor." And then he comes back, and Saul tries to kill him, and then he runs away. Yeah. I think it happened at least four times. Mm-hmm. Uh, or or Saul went out and tried to chase him down in the countryside. Saul killed a bunch of uh, a bunch of priests that that provided food and shelter for David and his friends. You know, it's a very it's not a healthy relationship. No. <laughs> is uh, Betty Lou Betty Lou still on the, on the recording? Are you still there, Betty Lou? She is. She is. Yeah, she's okay, here. Okay, I don't. I don't see you anymore on my okay. device. Okay, I'm still here, but I've got oh, there you are. Soon because okay. I'm due for a COVID vaccine over to, at the drugstore after a while. On the okay. on the phone, it only shows it doesn't show you every all everybody's picture at the same time. So. Right. Okay. I've done a couple of zooms on the phone. Um. So David has been anointed king, but I, you know, I, I one of the things that I think is a good lesson from all of this is that. It's so hard when people have power to give it up. Mm -hmm. Saul has a hard time, hard time giving up his power. Yeah. Even though he's been told, "You're not the king anymore." You know, he says, "Well, I get to decide whether I'm the king anymore or not." Yeah. Um, and so, uh, David has been anointed king, but is not king yet officially. So, we're on. We'll make this a quick Bible study so we can get all of it in, and Betty Lou can go uh chapter 29 now the philistines gathered all their forces at aphek while the israelites were encamped by the fountain that is in jezreel as the lords of the philistines were passing on by hundreds and by thousands and david and his men were passing on in the rear with achish so oh, one other thing about here so finally david said i'm going to leave the land entirely this is the last chapter i'm gonna leave the land entirely and join join the philistines and and David he, said that. David, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, because uh -huh. he was he was being chased everywhere, and and he he went and um, joined the Philistines. Part of the thing that ended up happening was then he they're they're sort of protecting him from from Saul, but he's also engaging in little skirmishes with the Philistine towns while he's being protected by them, which is sort of a like a Trojan horse, right? <laughs> they, David and his army is invited in and protected from Saul by the Philistines, and then David attacks the cities of the Philistines while he's there. So uh, it's not very nice. Um, okay, so, excuse me, Dan, but I have to leave. You are going to leave, okay. Oh. Thank you. So so this this parade of armies is actually the Philistines with David. Um. So that's that makes it kind of interesting at this point. Um, well, verse three, the commanders of the Philistines said, "What are these Hebrews doing here?" Achish said to the commanders of the Philistines, "Is not this not David, the servant of King Saul of Israel, who's been with me now for days and years? Since he deserted to me, I have found no fault in him to this day." 
But the commanders of the Philistines were angry with him, and the commanders of the Philistines said to him, Send the man back, so that he may return to the place that you have assigned to him. He shall not go down with us to battle, or else he may become an adversary to us in the battle. For how could this fellow reconcile himself to his Lord? Would it not be with the heads of the men here? Is this not David of whom they sing to one another in dances? Saul has killed his thousands, but David is ten thousands. It's an interesting thing. You know, he's he's going down to battle against Saul with the Philistines. Which yeah. Is, which is, and even though he's Saul's advisor, but he's also Saul's enemy. I mean, Saul has made him his enemy. So David holds an interesting kind of a place here. Uh, then Achish said, called David and said to him, as the Lord lives, you have been honest. And to me, it seems right that you should march out and in with me in the campaign, for I have done nothing wrong in you from the day of your coming to me until today. Nevertheless, the Lord do not approve of you. So go back now and go peaceably. Do nothing to displease the lords of the Philistines. David said to Achish, what have I done? What have I found in your servant what have you found in your servant from the day I entered your service until now that I should not go and fight against the enemies of my lord, the king? I just replied to David, I know that you are as blameless in my sight as an angel of God. Nevertheless, the commander of the Philistines have said, he shall not go with us up to battle, to the battle. Now then, rise early in the morning, you and the servants of your lord who came with you, and go to the place they appointed for you. As for the evil report, do not take it to heart, for you have done well before me. Start early in the morning and leave as soon as you have light. So David set out with his men early in the morning to return to the land of the Philistines. But the Philistines went up to Israel. Um, um, I wanted to back up for a second. Good, because I didn't follow all of that. So basically, the, well, I'm trying to find the, the thing where it says that even though he was protected by um by the philistines he still um sort of attacked their cities oh here um in chapter 28 uh david struck the land neither man or woman alive when Atya says against whom have you made it raided david say against the negev of judah or against the negev of the jeromelites or against the negev of the kenites but instead he actually went against the the philistine cities so he was protected by the philistines but he was attacking their cities um and now he is joining with the philistines to attack king saul's armies um but the other philistine lords don't don't like that mm -hmm. like that essentially their enemy is working on their side yeah yeah, yeah. so the king who thinks that david is all on the up and up says you know why don't you not join us in this fight and go back into the land and into the land of the Philistines and wait for it. So um, it, it's interesting, you know, I, my, part of my, my question with this is we have, we have the Hebrew people attacking other Hebrew people lots of times, but not when there's another foreign adversary involved. Right. Yeah. So, yeah wonder if it would be breaking you know one of god's laws or something if david were to attack saul and the and the and the other hebrews in the in the fight or what david would even do because david has said he's been good but he's actually not he's been sneaky attacking the philistines while he's being by them too so it's a it's a little bit of an interesting interesting thing yeah. so so the king sent him away so he didn't fight in this battle. Um, so then we're in chapter 30. Now when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, the Amalekites had made a raid on the Negev and the Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag, burned it down, and take captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great. They killed none of them, but carried them off and went their way. When David and his men came to the city, they found it burned down and their wives and sons and daughters taken captives. And David and the people who were with him raised their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. David's two wives had also been taken captive, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was in great, because that's where they lived, I guess. Uh, David was in great danger for the people spoke of stoning him because all people were bitter in spirit for their sons and daughters. 
But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. David said to the priest, Abiathar, son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. So the ephod is like a priestly garment. Um, so Abiathar brought the ephod to David. David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this man? Shall I overtake them? He answered them, pursue, for you shall surely overtake and shall surely rescue. So David set out, he and the 600 men who were with him. They came to the Wadi Bissor, where those who stayed who, where those stayed who were left behind. But David went on with the pursuit, he and 400 men. 200 stayed behind, the two exhausted to cross the Wadi Bissor. Wadi Bissor is a river. In the open country, they found an Egyptian and brought him to David. They gave him bread and he ate, and they gave him water to drink. They also gave him a piece of fig cake and two clusters of raisins. When he had eaten, his spirit revived, for he had not eaten bread or drank water for three days and three nights. Oh, I bet. That's, yeah, no kidding. Then David said to him, to whom do you belong? Where are you from? He said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite. My master left me behind because I fell sick three days ago. We had made a raid on the Negev of the Cherethites and on that which belongs to Judah and on the Negev of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag down. So he, so he knows that this is the people that have his, his people, his wives. David said to him, will you take me down to this raiding party? He said, swear to me by God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master, and I will take you down to them. When he had taken him down, they were spread out all over the ground, eating and drinking and dancing, because of the great amount of spoil they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. It's interesting. These are, this is a, this is a, so David is with the Philistines, but these are the Amalekites. So it's, a, it's, a different, it's a different civilization. And they attacked both the Philistines and Judah. Way to get everybody mad at you. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. <laughs> um, David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. Not one of them escaped, except 400 young men who mounted camels and fled. David recovered all the Amalekites had taken, and David rescued his two wives. Nothing was missing, whether small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything that had been taken. David brought back everything. David also captured all the flocks and herds, which were driven ahead of the other cattle. People said, this is David's spoil. Then David came to the 200 men who had been too exhausted to follow David and who had been left at the Wadi Besor. They went out to meet David and to meet the people who were with him. When David drew near to the people, he saluted them. Then all the corrupt and worthless fellows among the men who had gone with David said, he's making <laughs> Uh, because they did not go with us, we will not give them any of the spoil that we have recovered, except that each man may take his wife and children and leave. Oh. But David said, you shall not do so, my brothers, with what the Lord has given us. He has preserved us and handed us over to the raiding party that attacked us. Who will listen to you in this matter? For the share of the one who goes down in the battle shall be the same as the share of the one who stays by the baggage. They shall share alike. From that oh. day forward, he made it a statute and ordinance for Israel. It continues to the present day. So the people that went in on the attack wanted to keep all the stuff, including the yeah. wives and children. Yeah. Which is a little questionable. Um, and David said, no, just because they were too tired to continue doesn't mean they aren't, they didn't help us. Uh, when David came to Ziklag, he sent part of the spoil to his friends, the elders of Judah, saying, here's a present for you from the spoil of the enemies of the Lord. It was for those in Bethel and Ramoth of the Negev, in Jatir and Eror, in Sifmoth, in Esthamoa, in Rakal, in the towns of the Jeromites, in the towns of the Kenites, in Horma, in Borashan, in Ethak, in Hebron, all the places where David and his men had roamed. So basically, he got all that spoil back and he gave it. Remember before when he was running away from Saul, he kept being protected by people. Mm hmm. Fed by people, housed by people, stuff like that. So he sent, he sent spoil. He sent, you know, yeah, and things to those places to pay them back for protecting him or helping. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Yeah, he had good and he had frustratingly awful things that he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even like, you know, like if the story of David had been, he ran away from Saul and was protected by the Philistines. Yeah. I wouldn't have judged him too much. 
But then when he's with the Philistines, people are protecting him from Saul. He's killing Philistines, which is yeah, which is interesting. Uh, well, well, these are the one, the last group was not Philistines, but still. And then our last chapter of the book, the death of Saul and his sons. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled before the Philistines, and many fell on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines overtook Saul and his sons, and the Philistines killed Jonathan and Abinadab and Malteshua, the sons of Saul. Remember, Jonathan was a friend of... Um, yeah, so, a very close uh, friend of, of David. Very close friend of David, yeah. The battle pressed hard upon Saul. The archers found him, and he was badly wounded by them. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, draw your sword and thrust me through with it, that these uncircumcised may not come and thrust me through and make sport of me. But his armor bearer was unwilling, for he was terrified. So Saul took his own sword and fell upon it. When his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell upon his sword and died with him. Mm. That's, so there's a term, there's a term, um, falling on your sword. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean committing suicide. It means, um, you know, being willing to um, humble yourself, right? Mm. So if someone said, well, I, I, I failed in doing this or that, that's, yeah. just, that's falling on your sword. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, I, I made a mistake and I did this. Admitting to that sort of thing is that falling uh -huh. So it's interesting that it's actually here. He literally falls on his sword. Saul does. And kills himself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when the men of Israel who were on the other side of the valley and those beyond the Jordan saw that the men of Israel had fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook their towns and fled, and the Philistines came and occupied them. The next day when the Philistines came to strip the dead, they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Geboa. They cut off his head stripped off his armor and sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistines to carry the good news to the houses of their idols and to the people. They put his armor in the temple of Astarte and they fastened his body to the wall of Bethshan, his body. <laughs> but then that when the habits of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men set out, traveled all night long, and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall at Bethshan. They came to Jabesh and burned them there. Then they took their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree in Jabesh and fasted seven days. So at least he got a proper burial eventually. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And we will go in for multiple books, actually, not just chapters, um, into the kings on the reign of David. Oh, okay. But uh, we could continue on. We've only been. Well, we could we could wait. Yeah. I'll on? try and join you again next Wednesday. Next um, Wednesday. Okay. Thursday. <laughs> next Thursday, and um, then yeah. the, the the Thursday after that, we will not do it because it'll be uh, after Christmas. Okay. Well, thank okay. you. A little short Bible study, but nice to well, see. You. Good to see you, and good to speak with you. Say hi to the family. Will do. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Say hi to everybody you 